Hey there, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani, and this is the last video from the Devastating Effects of Gluten video series. So if you missed it, check the link out below the video. So again, today's topic is going to be on how do you heal from gluten. Now again, everyone's a little bit different. Just like some people may get in a car accident and walk away fine, and others may walk away or maybe get paralyzed or maybe have a broken hip or, or leg. So everyone responds a little bit differently to the effects and the pressure of gluten. So the analogy is you're driving a car, right? The tire gets flat. Now if we keep on driving on that tire, let's say for a day or two, not, not much may happen because we have the, the spare on there. But if we keep on driving on that tire for let's say a week, two weeks, maybe a month, maybe a year, again, you're gonna have problems with the front end alignment, with the suspension, with the axle, with the whole under underbelly of the car. So again, the longer that we're exposed to that stressor, which would be gluten, the harder it is or the more damage is caused. So everyone's level of damage is gonna be a little bit different and I'll try to address the various spectrum. So first things first, we have to be gluten-free, but not just gluten-free to heal. That's, that's kind of the obvious, right? We have to be true gluten-free. And what true gluten-free really is, is not just cutting out wheat, barley, and rye, but spelt, oat, corn, quinoa, uh, amaranth, maybe even rice, things like that. Especially if you have a diagnosed autoimmune condition, you may need to be on an AIP type of paleo diet where you're cutting out maybe even nightshades, which are tomatoes, potatoes, eggplants, and peppers, nuts, seeds, and maybe even FODMAPs depending on how your digestive problems are. If you're gluten-free and you're still having gas and bloating and such, well then you should probably cut out the FODMAPs and even go on a true gluten-free diet. And again, some people who have the devastating effects of gluten may heal just from going your regular gluten-free where you cut out wheat, barley, and rye and that's it. But there's a great majority of people out there where that is not enough and that's really where this video is catered to. So again, true gluten-free. That's going to be cutting out all the grains. That's going to be going potentially even cutting out the nightshades, the nuts, the seeds, and potentially the FODMAPs. And we have to be more extreme early on. We can kind of lighten up as the healing takes place and as the symptoms resolve. But definitely early on, we want to be true gluten-free or an autoimmune paleo with potentially even low FODMAPs. So again, really essential, a 5R program. I kind of coined the 5R um, as a little deviation from the 4 or the 6R. But how it works is this, we want to remove the foods and that would be the diet aspects we want to remove a lot of the bad foods so again that could be the AIP type of diet it may even involve a gaps type of approach some people that have serious autoimmune issues they need they, they may need to do a gaps or even an SCD a specific carbohydrate diet approach and again some just true gluten-free may be enough but again, everyone's a little bit different regarding what they need to remove and how much they need to remove. My recommendation is always go to the most extreme AIP, low FODMAP, if you have an autoimmune-like condition. Next, replacing. Replacing, we wanna cut out, excuse me, we wanna actually add in a lot of the enzymes and the acids and potentially even bile salts that are missing. Because when your body's stressed, again, what happens when we're stressed is this, here's a picture of your body like this, arms and legs. When you're stressed, you go into the fight or flight mechanism. Where does all your blood flow? It flows to the hands and feet because we want to run and fight. And if that's the case, what happens to the midsection? All of the fluids and all of the healing and nervous system response, we need the parasympathetic nervous system. That's going to bring everything back to the center. And if we are in that fight or flight mode, everything's going to be going towards the extremities. That's going to decrease our secretions of stomach acid. That's going to decrease our enzymes. Why? Because if you're running away from a tiger, right? When's the last time you're running away from someone or really mad at someone and thinking about food at the same time? Our body's always hardwired to turn off the food response when we're dealing with stress. And that includes digestion as well. That's why some people, when they have a sympathetic response, they may even wet themselves. So again, removing, we talked about the diet, replacing, that could be HCL, that could be enzymes, that could be bile salts, and it could even be specific enzymes like DPP4 enzymes. These are specific to breaking down gluten and dairy, so that's different for each person. 
when it comes to repairing. The whole aspect of the program is repairing unto itself. But we may have to do even more special things, such as bone broth, maybe even collagen. And we may even need to have fermented foods, depending on if you can tolerate that. And then healing nutrients. This could be and acetylcysteine, glutamine, glycine, deglycerized licorice. So I'll just put healing nutrients. So again, remove, replace, repair. The next remove, that's the second remove. The reason why I started this is this tends to be missing in a lot of people's programs. And this is removing the infection. So this is the infection connection regarding healing. And the reason why it's four down is because a lot of people in the beginning, you can't go and remove an infection in the beginning. It's too stressful on the body. Their adrenal glands are fatigued. Their thyroid glands are shot. Typically, they're not absorbing much nutrients. Their liver and gallbladder is not moving. And if you can't move your, your gallbladder and, and the liver properly, then we're going to be backed up. And when we start taking and pushing out toxins, we're going to reabsorb them and have a Herxheimer's reaction. So we want to make sure we wait, ideally, potentially one to three months, one to three months before we even touch infections, because we want to make sure the person's tolerance is up and ready for the immune stress and the lymphatic stress and the detoxification stress that it takes to get rid of the infection. Last but not least, re-inoculation. And re-inoculation includes pro, probiotics, and maybe even prebiotics. And ideally, something broad spectrum can be helpful. Again, the probiotics, I consider them, these are like the seeds. And the prebiotics are like the fertilizer. Now, this is really important. If you go out to a garden and it's full of weeds, the first thing you want to do before you throw down seeds is you want to weed it. You don't want all the seeds having to compete with all the weeds. That makes sense. So now once we've weeded the garden, that's like this step. We remove a lot of the infections, a lot of the dysbiotic bacteria, a lot of the inflammation. Once that step four is complete, the garden's open, now we can drop down a lot of those nice seeds and they're going to be able to grow better. That's the probiotics. And the prebiotics, that's where we're going to start knocking down the fertilizer. This could be resistant starch, like potato, or maybe even plantain or banana flour, for instance. And then we can also knock down some prebiotics, such as inulin, or maybe even some non-starchy uh, polysaccharides. And this can act as fertilizer. So we do the weeding first, drop down the seeds, and then the fertilizer has a much better effect at helping those seeds grow. And again, it takes time. Some people with serious autoimmune conditions, if you've been sick for a while, typically every one year, Excuse me, every one year you've been sick, it'll take one month to reverse that. So if you've been sick for about 30 years or 20 years, you're looking at about two to four years to recover. If you haven't felt good, maybe for three or four years, you may be able to return back to health in the next three to six months. But again, it's going to take diligence because again, these symptoms don't get there overnight. And if we don't address the root cause of the problem, things always get worse, right? Gravity kind of always goes downhill. So Hopefully this video series was very informative for everyone. If you're struggling with gut-related issues, hormone-related issues, and gluten is at the root, which it mostly is with the majority of patients that I see, feel free and check below the video. You'll get access to me, my links, my gluten video series, as well as my thyroid and female hormone video series. There's also a link where you can get access to me one-on-one -on -one so we can address the root cause of your health challenges. Again, this is Dr. Justin signing off. Have a great day.